Welcome to the headquarters of the largest freeze drying manufacturer in the entire world. And I'm going to share with you in this video why I came to visit their facility, what I learned from them about their technology, and why after leaving this facility and talking to the owners, I continue to believe that they are leading the charge in making home freeze drying and freeze drying as a business more accessible than ever before. Let's get to the video. I'm standing in the showroom of the largest freeze dryer manufacturer in the entire world. They're located in Salt Lake City, Utah. In this video, you're gonna learn the origins of how this company started back in 2012, as well as the evolutions of their freeze dryers and where they're headed in the coming years, as well as some new products and some things I learned overall about the freeze drying process. Hey, welcome to the Freeze Dry Business Channel. My name is David and I'm a freeze dry business owner in Idaho. This is the freeze dryer company that I bought my freeze dryer when I first started my company back in 2020 and I continued buying from them for specific reasons. And I'm gonna fill you in on those reasons today. But this freeze dryer is really what revolutionized giving access to all of us to be able to freeze dry at home as well as start a freeze drying business. And in this year, 2024, they're gonna be changing the whole commercial side of freeze drying with a brand new machine and that video will be released very soon. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and you'll be notified of when those videos come out as well as other videos about the Harvest Right freeze dryer directly from my visit here at the showroom. Now you're probably familiar with Harvest Right as a brand, but did you know much about the actual company? And I found that out today at the headquarters. It started with a family's idea of making freeze drying more accessible to everyone to preserve food. America has the leading food waste rate in the entire globe. I think it's upwards of 40% that we waste on food that we buy. And that's just not acceptable to a lot of people when it comes to the amount of food that you're wasting and the cost to that, as well as there's a lot of starving people out there. And in America, we tend to eat a lot, but we also tend to waste a lot. And so freeze drying can actually help reduce that food waste rate. And also for home freeze drying, it allows you to preserve any types of homesteading. You have your own garden, you have your own chickens, and you wanna preserve your eggs. Also, if you wanna meal prep and just preserve to have food for any case of emergency. The second part of it is now the business side. And that really took off about four or five years ago, 2018, 2019. And the XL that they came out with in 2023 really changed the landscape because now as a freeze dry business, we can do over 40 pounds of product in that freeze dryer, whether you're doing candy, fruit, milk, whatever you're doing for your freeze drying business, now you can scale at large with the XL freeze dryer by Harvest Right. Now, one of the reasons I like Harvest Right, especially as my preferred recommended freeze dryer for someone who's just starting out or you're expanding into more of a commercial run freeze drying operation is because they have a really wide array of different size freeze dryers that you can have. Now, the XL can do up to 40 pounds, Large can do anywhere between 12 to even up to 20 pounds, they say, and the medium can do anywhere between probably 10 to 16 pounds, and then you've got the small that can do the uh, less than 12 pounds. All these provide a wide array of options for you, whether you're in home use or commercial. I've got several of the large freeze dryers and it's ran great for me. Now, the XL has been revolutionizing the commercial side of freeze drying. If you already have one, you know that you can run a lot of product through that freeze dryer that you don't have to have multiple large machines. One of the great parts about this particular industry in freeze drying is you're always learning something. I thought I knew about freeze drying the sublimation process from just a standpoint of being able to do it for a long time. I knew that the freeze dryer freezes food and then it also has a vacuum so it takes the water out and then it defrosts and dries, things like that, right? But during my time here, I learned about the sublimation process for more of the physics types of side of things. And I wanted to share with you what that's all about. Normally, you have a solid state of water, you have a liquid state, and you also have a gas state. So there's three different states that water can be in, right? Well, with sublimation, you're basically skipping the part from it going from solid to liquid to gas. Instead, you're going from solid to gas. And the way that's done is through a vacuum process. So this system right here, it has a vacuum attached to it. That's why we have that vacuum pump. When you put strawberries in here that has water, it's in that solid state. The vacuum is going down to a specific level to where it's starting to basically extract that water and make it more vapor or it's making it more of that gas. The whole technology of Harvest Right, of what they developed, 
to revolutionize this industry is they made it so that the heaters actually know when that process is occurring, which then kicks on the drying process. As soon as you put this in here, it's gonna freeze it down to you know negative 30 degrees. Now that it's frozen, it knows that it can kick on the vacuum and that's why you see the vacuum starting going down from 2000 millitors down to you know 1500 to 1200 they aim for about 500 millitors that's the measurement of the amount of vacuum that is in this chamber again i'm not trying to make it more complicated it was actually made more simple to me once i got here at the facility and listening to them talk about the sublimation process so again not to be too repetitive but once you put in a solid state of liquid, you got the strawberries that have water in it, it's gonna freeze it, and then the vacuum's gonna turn on. That vacuum pulls it from a solid state to a gas state, and that's why you start seeing the ice build up around the chamber and have that all there. And then of course, once you're done with the cycle, you're gonna release the drain valve, you take the product out, and then you defrost and now it becomes that liquid. And the heating sensors in this particular unit is what drives this whole process. And the sensor in this whole technology is built around being able to dictate when it should start that vacuum, when it should start that drying process as well. Now, one of the common questions about freeze drying, specifically freeze drying candy, is you'll notice that sometimes in these freeze dryers, the top and the bottom freeze dryer don't pop the candy, or maybe it takes longer to get these things dry, and so you have to rotate out the trays. Well, that's because of physics. And the reason you're seeing inconsistencies on the top and the bottom tray is because the sensor's on the second to last tray. And so sometimes, just due to the physics side, you can have a temperature change on the top and the bottom shelf because the sensor is right on the second shelf. And so that's why you might see the inconsistencies of this tray not popping and this bottom tray not popping. In freeze drying, there's gonna be three away rate. That's common across the large freeze dryer people who you see freeze drying for Trader Joe's and for Target, things like that. There's going to be throwaway rates. So don't get frustrated by the fact that the top and bottom don't pop as much. Just accept the fact that sometimes you're going to see inconsistencies on those top and bottom trays, and then you can always take out the ones that did actually work. I really had some preconceived notions about Harvest Right. I thought that they were only focused on home freeze drying, that they didn't really see the commercial side of running a business, but that has changed quite a bit bit in terms of the size and the new machines that they're going to be coming out with. I didn't really know that they were revolutionizing the freeze drying industry. And the fact that they've made this technology as easy as just pressing start on the screen, that's really crazy because think of all the science that goes behind the sublimation process and making sure every single mechanism is working the right way, like I described. You have to have the right sensor. You have to have the right sensors to be able to kick on a pump that's gonna provide a lot of pressure so that it can extract all that water. And you recall the final dry process? That's actually a safety mechanism to make sure things are dry that they put in there. They told me that really you don't have to have that final dry process of heating it up to 120, 125 degrees. One of the questions that I had was, why is the temperature when I look at it 43 degrees? 55 degrees, 86 degrees, then back down to 40. Why is that always fluctuating? Shouldn't it be 125 degrees like I see when I have the final dry process or when I selected it at the beginning? And the explanation was awesome because he explained that during this sublimation process and the technology that they have in these trays is because that sensor is sensing the solid state of all the water in the product. So when you look at that strawberry and they need to extract more of that solid state of liquid and let's say you're getting to the final piece that lot of little tiny minute molecules or getting to more the thickest part of whatever is on your trays that's what's causing it to go up in temperature and go down as it's constantly fluctuating to figure out how much more of the sublimation process it needs to do and once it's done then you would see that it would just complete the process one other thing that i learned about this freeze drying process and the technology that harvest right has i was wondering why we actually get a in product that actually looks like what we put in there. For example, like the blueberries, the strawberries, pineapple, yes, it's lighter and yes, it maybe shrinks a little bit, but it still looks like a strawberry. Why doesn't it look like a dehydrated strawberry or something like that? And he said that's all based on the technology of their freeze dryers. The reason it fluctuates in temperature during the drying process is because the slower you have the process going, the more it's able to say, hey, we're gonna keep that strawberry intact 
I'm talking about the freeze dryer technology, right? We're able to keep that strawberry intact, but then extract some water and then come back to a smaller Militor vacuum pressure and then extract some more and then come back. So that way you don't just kick on that high dry temperature immediately in the high vacuum pressure. And then it would just like shrink down to more of that state that we know from dehydration. So I thought that was fascinating because now I understand why we're seeing the end product of fruit and vegetables and things like that still look the way it did when we put it in there. So just fascinating to know.